Hi Booktopia readers, I'm Philippa Gregory. I was originally drawn to write about women for the very simple reason that I am a woman and that I'm very, very interested in women's history and the struggle that women have had to express themselves throughout history. I think it's perfectly reasonable that a woman historian would want to look at women who are agents of their own lives, who struggle against patriarchy in order to create a life and to sometimes even rule a kingdom. The other thing is I think it's really interesting and important to talk about women's lives and experiences through history. And the Tudor period really came to me when I discovered the character of Mary Boleyn, sister to Anne Boleyn. That was my very famous book, The Other Boleyn Girl, and it was the first Tudor book I had researched. And I just entered into this world, which continues to fascinate me even today. The best sources for the relationship between Margaret, Mary and Catherine are the letters, it's called Letters Patent, which is a collection of all of the papers of the Tudor period, which you can even read online. Uh, what was interesting to me was the fact that they're, they're, they're a bad source in the sense that they're very, very critical of Margaret because they're written by Henry Tudor's spies and they're reporting to him when she, as his sister, is failing him as an ally in Scotland. So you read them, but you have to always take a pinch of salt. Some of the letters in the book are based on the original letters and some of them I've created because a lot of the letters between the women, the personal private letters, are lost. They wouldn't be considered of value to chroniclers at the time since they were between women, since they were personal, since they were private. Of course, to historians today that would be gold dust but we don't have them. I deliberately write novels that stand alone so anyone who wants to read one of my books for the first time. I think they should choose the period that they're most interested in or the, the, the character that they like the sound of. They are about a family, they are about a ruling family, they are about, occasionally they're about the royal family or the people who work for them or their challengers. But uh, I like it that they can be read entirely separately. They build up, in a sense, to a body of work, but uh, that's because everyone in the Tudor world is a very small world. In the end, everybody's related. I think the classic English novels inform anybody's writing who hopes to write well. That, in a way, if you read instance of, say, Middlemarch, a George Eliot novel, there's something so perfect and so complete and so rounded. It's such an obviously fine, work of art that it's important to read this sort of material before you start to attempt to write your own. You're never going to, you're extremely unlikely to, I am extremely unlikely to ever write anything as good as Middlemarch, but actually having that as it were as the industry standard gives you an idea of what can be achieved by someone who is committed to research and committed to lyrical, beautiful writing with great psychological insight and of course of course I aspire to that. I hope you enjoy my new novel, Three Sisters, Three Queens. It's out now.